Please note that this video was released during the corona time, the coronavirus time, but most of the footage we actually shot before we left uh, Canaries on our way to Gibraltar. We are about to go on a very long passage. So here's a few things that we had to do before we go. And I've, we've just come from the big shipping yard, so many of the stuff we already checked. But just before we go, the last minute things that we did was And then another thing that I've done is now a new contraption that I put here is I've put on these blocks. So when we're going on a very lo long passage and we need to secure tippex, then I take tippex as high as possible so that the waves don't get um, at the bottom and slam tippex. Also, something that I'm worried about is that if Tipex is constantly rubbing onto our um, life raft, then we might have a problem. So it might be the reason why our life raft actually uh, accidentally deployed. Because I think this, this pontoon over here was rubbing over those things over there and it triggered the life raft to fall off. Okay, so that's it. Make sure that the life raft is secure. Something that we did not do in the beginning, but we realized we, we just cannot go about it. We have to do it. And that is the drain holes. There's a lot of drain holes for the wet lockers and we actually stored a lot of things in the wet lockers that needs, that needs to stay dry. So if you can see below here, we've got quite a lot of wet lockers. To be 100% sure, we've got about eight of those wet lockers. So we have eight of the wet lockers and we need to actually fill all of the, the holes. So we made wooden bunks. It's not here yet because of the coronavirus, but we need to plug all of those holes. Don't plug the holes like the cockpit drains, the forward cockpit and of course the, the saloon and the aft cockpit. That separation, don't plug those holes because they are very needed during the passage. Tapix is, is a, I think they call it a wet dinghy. And the reason for that is we have these holes here that we can actually, the water can come in and out. And, um, and we just, we cannot plug those. So if it rains like this water, or if the water is splashing over, it can drain through that hole over there. So ensure that, that these holes are actually open and we can actually make underwater, if the water is splashing in here, it can drain. But however, this little plaque here, we need to make sure that this plaque is actually closed. Um, many models, they take the, the outboard off, but all that we, what we do is we just secure the engine so it cannot move left or right. So this is, we only secure it with with the sandal over here. This is loose and this is tightened so that the engine cannot move. So we have, we bolted it together. So it's actually bolted. So here is Tipex. You have to make sure that the dinghy cover is on, that all the Lines are secured and the, the dinghy cover lines are also secured. So also what I, I'm using, I'm using this line to make it secure so that 
Tipex doesn't move like this or backwards and forwards. And then also I have, I've got two spring grinds over here. So one is going to the stern and one is going to go to the bow. And it's connected on a fixed point over here. Because if it is, if it's going over the, the pontoons, then at night it gets deflated. It, uh, the air is contracting and then it moves quite a lot. So if you can find fixed points, it's better to, to make it on the fixed points. Then I also secured um, the line, the next line, this, this line, I will also secure on that side. So the bigs can also not move. There's then two spring lines on each side, two bow and two stern spring lines. And that's it for, for Tipex. Another thing that I do is I also secure our dive cylinders. So I make sure the dive cylinders is nice and tight so that they don't rattle around and shake. So all of these ice is, is very tight. Make sure your anchor is ready, ready to be used. And even though you think you're going to go into an open ocean and things like that, the thing is, if you do lose your engine somewhere on the way and you're getting to a lee shore, uh, which is kind of like dangerous, you can drop your anchor and that anchor can actually hook somewhere and you can, you can prevent the boat actually going onto shore. Um, it is actually a safety mechanism to make sure that your anchor is always ready for deployment and we've got a 100 meter chain so if needed be and we know we're going to go um, <laughs> hopefully it will not happen but if we if we realize that we are adrift then I'll just drop the anchor and I drop all 100 meters of chain and the moment we can get hooked we will hook and hopefully not get onto the onto the rocks make sure you your grab bag is on top of the lazarette wherever you normally store it so that it's easy to grab and um, for in case there's a, a problem arising. Some manuals is removing the topping lift for the Leopard 45. Um, I didn't see any need to actually remove the topping lift. Um, and one of the things is that if we do drop the main sail, then um, I just would like to have that extra protection that everything is not relying on a on a van that we can actually not having <laughs> the boom eating the helm top. So I, I keep it up there, but some of the manuals they um, ensure that your ensure that your jack stay is not crossed and it is free it is free of everything and the line remember last week this was crossed the wrong way so ensure that it is free all the way get your preventers out and get them ready wherever you think you're going to use them um, what we normally do is we fit them uh, around the boom and then they are ready to actually be going downwind if you're getting and if you're worried that you're going to get the accidental drive then fit it up our first leg is going to be um, into the wind as per usual so i'm just going to put our preventer close by um, we normally cover our speakers it is outdoor speakers but and it is marine speakers fusion marine speakers but we still cover it with plastic and we fill it So that the seawater and the salt don't build up inside. Check your bulges pumps for automatic and for manual operation. And the best way to do it is to actually chuck some water into the bulge 
and see that the floating mechanism is actually floating and that the water is going all the way through and all the alarms is going off what needs to go off. You also have to do the manual one. Is it going there? Ensure that the battery is switched on. Yes, the battery is on, the winch is on, and uh, the, the windlass is on, and the two electric winches are on. Stow all loose things that can go flying. To ensure that our water tanks is full. So one of the things that we do is we taste the water and if the water is good then we fill up. Um, we had to come from the shipping yard and we decided to stay the one night here before we go so we can refuel over there and we can get the picks ready and all of those things. So this this water was good and we now full of water. Both tanks are filled up, so they are ready to go. Get your latest weather maps again, and by now you should have a very good idea what the, what the weather is doing because you've been now checking the weather for the last month. And, um, and you have to check whether the weather is still as you expected it to be because tomorrow is the big day and we need to sail. So check whether the weather is still the way you expected it to be and the weather patterns is still and based on that finalize your plan finalize your your, your routes um, maybe you need to make a little adjustment maybe you should go above an island not below an island um, maybe you should not go at all so this is now your final time to make a decision um, based on the weather pattern if your route is finalized and you are sure this is the route that you're going to do, you have a backup plan, you've got backup uh, ports that you can go into. Of course, if you crossing an ocean, there's not many backup ports, but you might not be able end up where you wanted to end up. So you must make sure that the deviation factors is good enough and that you will have visas for the places that you need to go to if the emergency arises. For example, a hurricane can come, or a cyclone can come, or very bad weather can come, and you need to divert. If you have done that, and your final plan is there, you know it's going to be compatible with the weather, then also notify your, your people that you're going to go. Um, what we've done is on our Radium Go, we have a thing to say message and we start sending out the first track messages out to our family and friends so that I can start tracking us where we will go good this was a very long day we are almost ready to sail and tomorrow we will cast off and sail into the sunset one last check as we want to cast off, there's a couple of things that you need to do before you can just sail into the yonder. And that will be in our next episode.